All right, now that we've talked about the axiomatic method and other aspects of that, now we're going to move on to proofs. All right, so what are, <laughs> what are proofs? So the idea of a proof is when we get through this, I, you know, building up construction of new knowledge, we want to, you know, find new things that are true. So we start off at the bottom with things that we accept to be true, but I'd like to find some new things that are true. And um, ways that we do this is we're going to, we have obviously logical equivalencies. And if we use logical equivalencies where we're just showing that if I have one, it forms into the second. We also use the rules of inference are this idea of taking, you know, this is logically the same, a rule of inference is a tautology that allows us to get to valid conclusions from true premises. Then typically when we're looking for these new things, what do the new things typically look like? And so types of stuff to show to be true. Right, what are we looking for? Well, first off, what does it mean to be show? Well, that's what we call the proof. The proof, which is the, the mathematical argument that would take the compound proposition that we're working at and show it to be true, and so that would be the process that we go through. Now, if I have a statement that we're looking at, we would have a conjecture is the statement we think may be true, but I don't know, right? Now, on the other hand, once you show it, which means prove it to be true, we change its name. And uh, we reuse some words, uh, and we have several possibilities, and they go up into greater and then lesser meaning. Um, it goes from a conjecture, you know, into we could use a word like a fact. Uh, we could use a word. Now here's a bad part. Proposition, but it has a different. <laughs> Here's a here. This is terrible about choices of language. This has a different meaning than uh, our old one. Our old one means a declarative sentence is either true or false, but not both. Now I'm saying that, well, this is actually a conjecture that has been stated to be true. Uh, we could also move and call it a lemma. Or I could call it a theorem or I could call it a corollary. Normally what happens is when we pick words, why would you pick one of these words for these? If it's kind of of low importance or it actually has no, it's, it's a new thing that's true. I've learned a new piece of knowledge, but if it's kind of on the low scale of meaningless, uh, doesn't have as much importance, this is low importance. We would use this word for low importance, right? On the other hand, if it's really important, if it's an important new truth, call it this, right? If it's an important new truth, uh, you not only might you call it a theorem, you might even name it after the a person who first yeah. did it. It's like really, really important. We normally call it a theorem. If it's low importance, we'll call it a fact or a proposition. You know, something that I've shown to be true, and again, it's a t we probably ought to not use proposition because we already reserved it. Uh, now, what about the other two, lemma and corollary? A lemma is a new truth whose sole purpose, I've proved it, but it usually is only meant to exist to show that something that is much bigger is true. So if I have to build something up, I need... 
I need to build up part A. If we go back to that one that I did in the last video where it was going through this argument forms where, hey, look, this is, a, this is my first conclusion. So I came up with this conclusion. Well, that's a new truth, right? And this new truth, and I came up with another one by using propositions 2 and 3 and 5, and this is a new truth, right? But these new truths don't, aren't meant to stand alone. And when I put them together, it came up with my big thing that I was really see seeking out. So you could have called showing the first one, I could have called this a lemma. This one, I could have called this a lemma. And then the big one, I could have called a theorem. And so that's one of the reasons why we pick it. Now, a corollary, on the other hand, is one that also points back to the theorem in that it's an obvious result. So let's go way back here. This is actually an argument form. That means if I plug anything into here, right, it's still a, a truth. So if I start talking about Superman, that would be a corollary version of this argument form. So the argument form would be the big theorem throwing in particular examples that's like well that's true because it actually meets the argument form so that would be like a corollary it's a new truth you're talking about superman now therefore superman does not exist that would be a corollary statement based upon this big theorem which was the argument form that i proved at the at this part and so the choice of words is kind of a choice of how important you believe this new truth to be all right, so what we're going to do in, from now and like several other lectures is now that we have a objects, we're going to break them up into types and types of conjectures. And the first ones we'll talk about is number one would be any conjecture involving an implication, right? So for example, So an example we would have would be if n1 is odd and n2 is odd, then n1 plus n2 is even. So this entire thing is a conjecture. If I prove it, if you can prove it, which means show it to be true, we would then call it a, well, it's simple. I would just simply call this a fact, right? Change its name from conjecture into fact after you prove it. If you disprove it, it's no longer conjecture. It's just something that's wrong. And so we would toss it. And so in the next video, I'll do a couple of these and we'll talk about techniques to show what does it mean to prove um, we'll do proof techniques in a particular way to do it. And so the first technique that I'll do in the next one is to use vacuous and trivial and direct proofs.